On today's video, we're going to talk about my new car hauler. It was my birthday a couple weeks ago, and I decided to buy myself a Tempty 720. This is the first thing that I bought new that was this expensive. I went this fancy because this was on sale and it was the last one that they had in stock. I've always wanted a nice lowering trailer. I've seen the videos of the bagged ones and the hydraulic ones, but this one's a little bit different. It works on a winch system, but everything's really solidly made. The trailer is made out of aluminum, so it's a little lighter weight. This is a 20 foot long trailer, which is a little bit longer than I wanted, but this was the last one that they had on the lot, so I wound up just jumping on it. Over the last couple months, I wound up selling my TE37s and my my Volvo 240 wagon which I'm kind of sad about still but it allowed me to save up a pretty decent down payment on this trailer. I've always taken pride on me driving my cars to events but as my cars get older and as I get older I really needed a trailer so that's why I jumped on this thing. As I start driving a little more aggressively drifting too I think it's a good idea to have a trailer just in case something goes wrong. Hopefully the Mustang doesn't become a trailer queen and hopefully I don't jinx things by trailering the car now but I probably will. There's a cover that covers all this up, but I exposed this because I wanted to charge this battery. It looked like this trailer had been sitting for a little bit. It's supposed to be a 2023 model, but I think it's actually a 2022. But with this winch system, it goes to some pulleys and then lowers the entire deck. With this setup, I feel like you could still jack it up if you needed to, like if something did break on the winch system, and then you would be able to go home because there is some axle locks that are on this trailer. So with the winch setup, you do get a manual controller. This goes up and down, obviously, or pulls the cable in and out. It does have a hard shut off so you can save your battery and then this box is lockable. That way you can keep this thing semi safe. I feel like once a week I'm on Instagram or Facebook and somebody's getting their trailer stolen. So more importantly than having the winch switch is having this wireless remote. It means I can drive the car on the trailer while it's lowered and then raise myself up and then get out of the car. It also means when I'm taking the car off of the trailer I can get in and then lower it and then back off because when you have a lowering trailer it's always going to put the fenders higher up. Like on the bagged ones and also on the hydraulic ones the fenders always move up so for the purposes of this video i'm going to go ahead and turn this thing on and then put the mustang on the trailer just so you get a good idea of how it works and what it looks like and what it do first things first is going to be to put the trailer on the ball for your ball hitch the wheel doesn't roll very good but it's it's kind of a one-man operation i might need two hands for this that's what she said <laughs> I took two hands and then it was a lot easier. Obviously you want to chain the hitch up, but we're just doing this for demonstration purposes. So we're not worried about hooking up our brake and also the chains. We're just gonna pull this forward and put the car on it. Then to lower the trailer, you want to make sure the power is on. Then you want to go around and unlock these pins. There's a separate one for each one of the wheels. You definitely want to make sure that you do that. And we're going to use the wired remote just so I can show you. You want to press the outside of the switch. And then that lowers the trailer. Now it's about as low as I think it'll go. You don't want to keep hitting the out switch because I think potentially the cable could get binded up. It's like a slinky. You can see how high the fenders get when the trailer's lowered. It's kind of an interesting design. I think it kind of scares people away. I'm not sure, but these apparently were sitting on the lot for a little while. You can see how low it goes. It's supposed to be a four degree incline. I'm not sure what it actually is. I don't have any kind of, was it a protractor or a compass, whatever it is. I, I don't remember. We're gonna go ahead and put a car on. We're gonna be using the 2011 Mustang for that. I put the front bumper back on just for this test. Plus I'm going to an event on Sunday and I want it to look good. Usually to get this thing on the trailer, you gotta have the front bumper off and you can see I got donuts on the front because it's so wide. But we're gonna go ahead and try to get it on the trailer with the bumper. I think it'll fit. trailer but it's a really wide car you definitely want to make sure you're as close as possible to the left on this you know if you happen to have a, a wide body 2011 
I guess it's not quite low enough. It's definitely hitting a lip. Damn it. Don't forget your gloves while handling wood. You don't want to get splinters. Just using some two by eights or tens. I don't know what these are. Not a carpenter, damn it. I feel like it just needed a little bit of a cheat to get on there. Honestly, I could just take the bumper off, but I think this will be cooler. It kind of stinks in here because the car's leaking. It smells like mold now. Uh, I think we're good. I also think if my driveway wasn't on a decline, this would be a little bit easier. But it looks like it's going to clear. it's in gear so it doesn't roll off of the trailer obviously and uh, if you had an e-brake you want to put that on one thing i did notice is that the door does hit the fender ever so slightly so that's a little bit of a problem because i want to be able to just get out of the car and i can't really do that so we're going to take this fender off we're going to drill out the rivets on this brand new trailer so i can take the fender off and connect it a little bit easier but for now i gotta climb out i am too old and i have too much of a beer belly for this but we're gonna do it anyway you can see it's only held on with i guess five rivets it's gonna be this one and then these three here and then this one over on this side it won't be too much to drill out i think i'm gonna to try to use rib nuts plus when i take this off it'll allow us to go even further back so once we do that i'll be able to open the door get in and out because it'll definitely clear the tire Gonna take our electrician's hammer and try to beat them off. <laughs> Does clear. That's pretty cool. We're gonna check the pressures before we go because I don't have a spare. I gotta find one of these as a spare. Start carrying that around, I guess. But yeah, let's move it back a little bit and then we'll strap this thing down. Strap the car on the trailer. We have some D rings that come on the trailer. I guess you can add these to different points if you want. They kind of they can be moved around quick and that kind of thing. Pull this collar up and you can move it around. Put them up front if you want. We're going to keep these on the side. Because this trailer is kind of long, the one on the back is pretty far away. It'd be nice if we were towing a Cadillac or like a Lincoln Continental or something. But with the Mustang, that's a little far away. That's why we're going to try to pull the car back a little bit. Still need to fix this. If anybody wants to sponsor me, a big sponsorship label would go pretty good right there. For straps, we got these from our friends at Amazon. The whole kit made by a company called Vulcan. I'll have some links in the description below if you want to buy your own. Comes with the wheel strap harnesses and the ratchet buckles with snap hooks. So this should be perfect for what we got going on. And we got the brightest ones we could get. I feel like it'll draw attention to the car and nobody will hit it. At least that's a theory. It's so much easier than climbing into the window. Uh, that's pretty close to the rear fender. I might drill out the rivets on this one at some point, but this fender does have some lights on it, which I guess isn't a big deal. Might not do that today though. I think we're just gonna run with where it is right now. Most of the weight's gonna be kind of over top of that axle, and I think we should be fine. It doesn't put too much on the tongue. This whole section is pretty long though. It kind of sucks because I feel like that's a lot of leverage on the ball, but it'll be fine, I think. Let's try to strap it down. It sucks that I'm gonna get these nice bright things so dirty. This come with a nice bag. Comes with some instructions. You just want to pull the strap through the wheel at about 10 and 2. Then put the strap in the ratchet and then ratchet it down to the D-ring. We're just going to go ahead and put the safety pins back in on the trailer. And yeah. This is my rib nut gun. These are gonna be the same size rib nuts that are actually on the fender flares. 
You can buy this tool from Harbor Freight, it's pretty cheap. Mine has some gunk on it, but it just so happens that this hole is the same size hole as the ones that we made for Defender Flares, and I got spare hardware laying around already. I think this is 1024 is the size, I can't remember. The rib nuts are just kind of like a threaded insert. Put it on this tool and then it kind of pulls the threads and expands the base of this rib nut. Just screw it on, put it in the hole. Squeeze the tool pretty good. And then unthread it. And now you can through bolt stuff. This bit was very expensive, but I think it's going to be shallow enough to where I can just drill the channel and maybe not drill a hole into my trailer. I just want to be able to drill the channel. We'll see if this works. That's right, I'm drilling holes in my brand new trailer. That ain't going nowhere. I'll probably get the stake D-ring thing soon too, just because. Now let's go drift.